Hey, welcome to the fifth installment of the Dashboard December series. I've got lots of cool stuff to go over, including some serious improvements to the Lighting Group YAML that I showed you in a previous video, and how my basement is set up in my dashboard, including my office, where I'm recording this video right now. Let's get started. If you're just joining the series now, I recommend fixing yourself a drink, finding a comfortable chair, and starting with video number one. There is a lot of information to go over, and a lot of the code is reused across many of my dashboard pages. I really only take the time to explain it the first time I show it, so some stuff gets jumped over a bit. That way, I'm able to keep the time down on these videos a bit, while still showing the information that you need to set something up like this for yourself. Nobody likes hearing the same things over and over again, am I right? I'll drop a link for episode one in the description below. Let's dig in. In a previous video, I showed you that I had grouped all my lights by floor in my configuration.yaml file. I then used those groups in these sensors like this one here on lines 472 through 483 to determine the number of lights that are on. This allowed me to simply query that sensor for my dashboard to display how many lights were turned on on that floor of the house, rather than having to check each light in code on the dashboard page. Since I do have multiple dashboards, keeping them both in sync was a pretty big pain, and some stuff would get added to one and not the other, and vice versa. Why do you have multiple dashboards? There are some things I don't want guests to be able to get at, like the controls for the master suite and the nursery, so I have a dashboard for the tablet on the wall in the kitchen, and those items have been removed from that dashboard. Anyhow, for the individual rooms, I was querying each light that was in the room to see if any of them were on, and then using that to control whether or not each room should be lit up on the dashboard like this. Not only was this getting to be pretty big and ugly, but I had to remember to add the code for each new thing that was added too. Now, I'm not adding some crazy amount of stuff to my house every day, but in my opinion, that only made things worse. 99% of everything on my dashboard behaved exactly as expected, but there'd be one or two things that didn't quite conform to the standard that I had already laid out, which just made it super irritating. I mean, if the entire dashboard was a wreck, then I wouldn't rely on any of it, right? But when most of it works perfectly, the natural human tendency is to expect it all to work perfectly. For those of you just getting started, Doing things this way will make adding new things to your house much easier than it was for me when I was getting started. Anyhow, that code that I just showed you has been updated, as well as a bunch of additional code has been added. Let's take a look at that now. Here you can see that I have defined groups for every room in the house. Note that the groups on lines 149, 151, and 153 are empty. These are placeholders, and these rooms eventually will have smart switches in them, I just haven't gotten around to rewiring them properly with a neutral yet. Below those groups are the floors on my house. Rather than list each individual device on the floors like I had them before, I added the groups to find above for each room on that floor of the house. This is so much easier since now all I have to do is add the device to the correct room in the house one time in my configuration.yaml file and it automatically gets added to the correct floor as well and gets added to the dashboard code for icon coloring. But we'll get to that in a minute. Below all these groups then, we still need to have sensors to query them all to return the number of devices that are on. I had previously shown you the code I was using to do this, but I had to rewrite it. The first version of code only checked the entities that were in a group. It could not evaluate nested groups, which is when you put one group inside of another group, like I've done by creating groups with rooms and then adding those groups to the floors. This code is able to do that, and it has the added benefit of being a little bit more compact. Honestly, it's how I should have written it the first time, but I digress. Beginning on line 377, the main floor lights count sensor is defined. Line 378 is the friendly name, then 379 to 385 is the code that makes it go. On 380, we specify that group.firstfloorlights is the group that should be evaluated here. Line 381 is the important bit for nested groups since it specifies that all group membership should be expanded. Then on line 382, 
we say select all the entities where state equals on, 3D3 lists them, and 3D4 counts them. Done. As you can see, I wrote these sensors not only for each floor of the house, but also for each room. Just keep copy pasting the code and changing the names and group names as many times as you need. Next, let's get into the dashboard. We're going to take a look at the basement dashboard in this video, but the changes that I'm about to show you in the way I'm querying the light counts, as well as shutting off the lights, have already been modified across my entire setup. We begin, of course, with a vertical stack. The first things added are a mushroom title card, followed by the code to display the number of lights that are on, and then the back button and the typical temperatures and any other sensors on this floor. In this case, there's a contact sensor on the egress window, three leak sensors, one for the sump pump, one for the hot water tank, and one for the bathroom sink. The code for these is the same as the rest of the pages. Green, no water when dry, red, water when wet. Moving down, we find a horizontal stack, and the first card is for my office. Here, for icon color, you can see that I'm leveraging the new light count sensor for my office instead of checking each light individually. This change really helped clean up the code in here. The next change you'll notice on this card is the hold action. Sure, sure, it's the same as you've seen where I'm calling homeassistant.turnoff service, but take a look at what I'm turning off. That's right, I'm turning off the group. Once again, this has really helped clean up the code. But not only that, I don't have to enter each entity name under both icon color and turn off sections and then add it to the proper floor in configuration.yaml. I simply add it to the correct room in configuration.yaml and it gets included everywhere I need it to be automatically. Not only is this so much easier, but it's also so much more accurate. There were times when I'd have things added to color the icon indicating something was on, but long pressing the button didn't turn everything off or vice versa. My dashboard really was a mess. I mean, my attention to detail is pretty good, but some of this stuff gets put in when you're in a hurry and when it's super complicated and the same thing has to be added in three or four spots, it's pretty easy to miss one. The best way to handle all this type of stuff is to always follow the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. So my apologies that what I showed you previously was not simple. My goal at the time that I wrote that was functional, and it was, but I think this demonstrates my commitment to continuous improvement and making sure that I show you guys the best way I know how to do something, even if it does expose some flaws in a method that I previously showed you. What can I say? I'm constantly learning and making things better and easier, and I'm excited to show you guys all this stuff along the way. We learn together. Back to the dashboard. After office is the mechanical room, this is where my sump pump, furnace, hot water tank, and my relay rack full of equipment is located. There's no smart switches or anything in here yet, so this room is really just a placeholder on the dashboard. Next is another horizontal stack, and this one's got buttons for both the workshop and the bathroom, which, again, are just placeholders. What can I say? Whoever finished the basement didn't wire stuff to code. Lucky for me, it was only a handful of rooms in the basement that they did a poor job on, and since my office was a priority, I already rewired all that. In the next horizontal stack, we've got buttons for the basement stairs, a switch that controls the top outlet on a bunch of switch receptacles, I hate them things, and a button for the basement hallway light. Next are a few lights in the large open area of the basement. Some recess lights, some accent lights, and a button for the cat room, which is a closet with a smart bulb where the litter boxes are located. This light is controlled by a motion sensor and comes on for 60 seconds at a time so the cats don't have to do their business in the dark. Let's get into my office now. But hey, speaking of my office, some of my more observant viewers may have noticed some changes in the past few videos. I've really put a lot of work into my office and the set for recording my videos. Several of you have mentioned that I should do a studio tour. Let me know in the comments if that's something you guys are interested in and I'll make it happen. Anyhow, this view starts in the old familiar fashion. Vertical stack with a title card followed by back, temperature, and humidity chips. On the first horizontal stack, we find buttons for the overhead light in my office, which is hardly ever on, and a button for the closet light. Really? The closet light? I have, or will have, smart switches on all the closet lights in the house. There's a couple reasons for this. The first, many of the closets I use contact sensors on the doors to automatically turn the lights on and off when the door is open or closed. 
The other reason, and the reason I initially started putting smart switches on the closets, is that for some reason around here, it's really easy to leave the closet lights on and close the door, and then nobody notices for days at a time, depending on which closet it is. Being able to see that on the dashboard helps make sure that everything is turned off and we're not making my already out of control electric bill any worse than it has to be. Anyhow, those buttons use the old familiar code to turn them yellow if they're on and pressing the button just toggles the light on and off just like you'd expect a switch to do. Next is another horizontal stack containing the buttons for the two GoV LED floor lamps behind me. I picked these up on sale from Amazon for 49 bucks each and they were super easy to add to Home Assistant. Even though they're local control, there's a bit of delay when pressing the buttons to turn them on and off. I'm not sure why that is, but it's not that bad, so I haven't bothered tracking it down just yet. Probably not much I can do about it anyway, but who knows. After that is a button for my desk lamp, followed by buttons for the two bulbs in my floor lamp. Last on this page is the flat panel TV that I use as a monitor for my editing workstation. That was a lot of dashboard to get through again, but I do feel like it went a bit quicker since a lot of the code is cookie cutter and was already covered in previous videos. Remember, all the code that we went over today is available for my patrons to download. If you'd like to join them to help support the channel, there's a link in the description. All sorts of benefits are available to my patrons, such as early access to ad-free videos, copies of my complete configuration, automation, and dashboard YAML files, access to the FHT Discord server, exclusive giveaways, and more. Benefits start at just three US dollars per month. To all my current patrons, thank you for your support. You guys are amazing. There's one more video yet to come in this series, and it'll cover the security page and the information page, as well as some other great little odds and ends to wrap up. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and click that so that you don't miss it. You can also ring that stupid little bell if you're really enjoying my content and want to get that obnoxious notification as soon as a new video is published here on YouTube. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you liked this episode's t-shirt and I hope that I was able to show you something new and give you some ideas on how to make your dashboard even better. Thanks for watching and until next time, go automate something, will ya?